Hey there, welcome to the channel. My name's Greg. Today I'm going to show you how I made British bangers. Lincolnshire bangers to be more specific. I'm going to be making my bangers two ways today. I want to see if there really is any difference between rusk and breadcrumbs. Let's get started. I'm going to be using some pork butt for this Lincolnshire sausage. Going for about 25 to 30% fat. It's what I usually like in most of my sausages. And pork butt is usually right around that. Going to cut it into pieces that'll fit in my grinder. And the smaller the pieces, the quicker it'll firm up in the freezer because I do want it to be partially frozen before I grind it. This particular pork butt looked a little lean, so I got a little extra fat. There's a fair amount of marbled fat in here. I think it'll be just perfect. Let me put this into my freezer so we can firm up for a few minutes here. And I will continue getting the rest of my ingredients ready. While my meat is chilling out, Gonna get my rusk soaking. Want this sausage to be 70% meat and 30% rusk and water. So I've got equal parts of rusk and water here. And I'm just gonna get it soaking, soften this rusk up a bit. I made a video when I made this rusk, and I got a comment in there, someone suggesting you could just use breadcrumbs. They suggested, why don't you make a recipe, do one part with breadcrumbs and one part with rusk. So I'm accepting the challenge. And I'm going to use breadcrumbs. These are just plain old breadcrumbs. Now I have read some people suggest to use sourdough breadcrumbs because the yeast can have a flavor. But uh, just got store-bought breadcrumbs. If there's a noticeable flavor difference, maybe I'll try sourdough breadcrumbs for another video. Okay, I've got my breadcrumbs soaking and I got my rusk soaking. Next, I'm going to get together my spices. I'm going to keep these in the refrigerator so they stay nice and cold. The Lincolnshire sausage, like all sausages, it's going to have some salt. I'm going to use some white pepper. If you'd rather use black pepper, you know, that'd be fine. You do you. And because I did not get enough fresh sage to do a double batch, I'm going to add some dry sage. I'm going to use a combination of fresh and dry. And my fresh sage that I've chopped up. And that's it. It's been about 45 minutes and my meat is firmed up partially frozen. I've also had my grinder parts in the freezer. Now I'm using my 10 millimeter plate today. The Lincolnshire Banger is supposed to be a relatively coarse sausage. This 10 millimeter plate should do it. Once my meat is done grinding, I'm going to run a small handful back through it. This will clean out any meat off the auger that may have got left behind there. Now you can see I've got a very coarse, heavily, clearly defined grind, no fat smear, and that's because my meat was so cold when I ground it. So I've split my meat into two, so I can do one with rusk. So here's 700 grams of meat, and this is 150 grams of rusk, soaking in 150 grams of water. Usually my percentages of spice and salt are based on the meat, but all the banger recipes I've seen, the salt and spice is relative to this mixture here of meat, rusk, and water. So I got a thousand grams, one kilo, meat, rusk, and water. And that's how I got the percentages for my spices. I'm using half the amount of fresh sage that I would use if I had enough. But because I wanted to do this experiment, the breadcrumbs versus the rusk, I'm using half fresh sage and half dried rub sage. Now I'm just gonna mix this till it gets sticky, till those spices are really well distributed. And I start pulling some of the myosin and actin out of this meat. Starting to get there, it's sticking to my hand. Not as well as I'd like it to though. So we'll keep going. And it's just like kneading, squeezing it through my fingers, flipping it around. Now I can tell I'm getting close because it's really lifting my bowl up. I can feel it trying to tug my gloves off. It sticks to my hand really well. And you can see it does have like strands that reach out. It looks a little furry. Little pieces of fuzzy meat. And that is how I know my mix is ready. So I'm going to set this aside real quick. Mix up the other one. Do you want to do this pretty quick? Because once I mix that bread rusk in there, like any binder, it starts to get stiff. It's a little tougher to squeeze through the stuffer. Wearing these liners under my gloves because this meat is below freezing right now. 
right around freezing is perfect. I can tell you right now, my bread crumb mix looks a lot different. It's more like a thick paste, whereas that rusk had some texture to it. It might be because the breadcrumbs were definitely ground a little finer than the rusk, but that's how they sell breadcrumbs. And you know, when I bake bread, I don't really have leftovers. I eat that up when I make it. And even if I buy a good bread, I usually don't have leftovers for breadcrumbs. Once my breadcrumbs are mixed in, I'll mix in my spices. I did use regular breadcrumbs for my chipolata, and that was delicious. It's kind of what got me thinking about making these bangers. Okay, we're getting close. All right, now we're good. Sticking to my hand. It's got the fuzzy texture. Time to get out the stuffer. I'm just going to take a handful or two at a time. Push out the air as I go. That smells really good, just like it is. There's my stuffer, all ready to go. Just like to get a little water on the horn. Just helps things slide better if it's lubed up. You know the drill. I'm gonna take my two most useful fingers, stick them in the casing, get a little water inside, spread that on over. This is a really big casing. Sure, I won't use it all, but I'm gonna thread it all on here anyway. Damn, that thing's big. I just lower the piston, start squeezing the meat till a little red tip shows up. Tie a knot here and a couple of holes. Now I'm using 30-32 hog casings. You could use slightly larger if you want. And the real trick here is to fill them full, but not too full. You want to be able to pinch and have that stay there. Otherwise, you probably burst some when it comes time to stuff them. All right, I do want to get as much of this out as I can. So I'll use this tool. Back of a wooden spoon works okay too. And then just shove out what I can. Now there's still some left in my hopper. I'll often try to shove that through here. And I actually have a little trick I learned recently. Many ways to twist a sausage. One is to go away from you with the first one, then pinch and come towards you with the next one. Pinch, go away from you. Another way to do that. So this one's away from me, so I can go up to the next one. Instead of twisting that one, I'll just skip to the next one. And that's going to be away from me also. Just now they would all be away from me. That's how I usually do it. These are really plump. And I'm uh, surprised none of them broke. They might break when I cook them. That I think is why they call them bangers originally. These are a fairly high rusk content. So I think that's what makes them burst. Kind of like rice in the boudin. So I'm just gonna put holes in my casing where I might see a little air pocket. Especially pay attention to your last one, that tends to get the most air pockets, for me anyway. All right, looking pretty good to me. So there's my breadcrumb batch. Got my rusk batch loaded up, and just push it out to the end. It's sliding, but it's a little sticky, so if your horn doesn't slide that good, just lube it up with a little more water. You know the drill, if it doesn't slide, lube it up. Another quick knot, couple holes for air, stuff the rusk patch. And I won't use this first one or two, for maybe even three for tasters, because the first one's going to be breadcrumb from what's left in the hopper. And then we'll get into ones that are probably a little bit mixed. Let's check out this hack I found in the comments. I got a balloon. Partially filled with water. I got the wrong balloon. Ideally, you want to fill it all the way with water because water can't compress. Air can. But this balloon, big enough, it won't pop. So check it out. I'm going to put this in my hopper. I've got that balloon placed so that it's like right above this where this joins. That's where all the meat is stuck. There will still be a little stuck, but it's mostly in the horn. I think that's all I'm going to get there. There we go. You see, it has pushed most of the meat out of my hopper. All that's really left is what's in my horn. And then I can take my little horn stuffing tool and just push that through. And that's a pretty easy way to get all the meat out. It's not the only way, but it's a pretty easy way. And then that last bit, sometimes I just shove it in there. Waste not, want not, get it all in there. Push it all through. Now this can easily be resalted. Although I've got one more batch of sausage I'm going to make, so I'm just going to try to keep it hydrated. Probably stick that on some water real quick. 
Now I'm just gonna link these. Just gonna do the easy way. Pinch it, move up one, pinch it, twist that away from me. Pull up one and pinch it, skip to the next one and pinch it, twist that away from me. They're all gonna get twisted away from me. Gonna stick these on a rack. Keep these in the fridge overnight. Those flavors will get even better. They'll just develop. These herbs will hydrate. The rusk will continue to hydrate the breadcrumbs. And we'll do a taste test tomorrow. Well, I've had these in the fridge. The flavors should be all blended quite well. I don't know if you can really see in the camera. These are the rusk ones. To me, they look a little darker than the breadcrumb ones. We're going to give it the true test in a second here. It's going to separate these. You know, it's either this one or this one. That one's good too. They're all really good. I want to take the best of them for comparison's sake. So I'm going to set this one aside to cook. So I know these first couple ones are breadcrumb, a mix of breadcrumb and rusk because that's what was still in the hopper. This one actually looks to be the first one all rusk. This looks like a nice plump sausage. It's definitely on the rusk part of it. I don't know if you can really see the difference. This is... Definitely looking darker to me than that. Anyway, I'm gonna start cooking them so we can taste them. These are looking really good. I don't know if you can tell, but they're like, they're super fat. These are just super plump. Super plump sausages. Let's get a look. Oh yeah. <laughs> Straight off the bat, you can see it's a very coarse texture. This is the breadcrumb one. Ooh, super hot. Before I give you my thoughts, let me try the rusk one. Here's the rusk. Here's the breadcrumb. Breadcrumb. Squeezing, I'm not getting any juice out. The rusk. Squeeze, I am getting some juice out. Let's take a bite. Well, the flavor on both of these is very much sage dominant. Right, let's get one more look at that. The rusk unquestionably has a better texture. It's holding the juice in better. Breadcrumbs, rusk. In a lot of ways, I think this is what people think of when they think of a, a banger, a British banger, at least people in the States. To me, the breadcrumb sausage has a slightly pasty texture. The rusk has a much better texture. And as you can see, it just tells the juice better. I also feel like this might be a little more snappier, but I don't know if that's just an individual sausage or if that's because of the rusk. But it is a little snappier, definitely juicier. It has kind of a light and airy texture to it, whereas the breadcrumb one, it has more of a pasty texture, and it doesn't have that light, airy feeling to it. Now, to be fair, in this comparison, it might not have been apples to apples because the, the rusk I used was very coarse and the breadcrumbs I used was very fine. I used store-bought breadcrumbs, which are much finer. But the truth is, if I bake bread or if I buy a good loaf of bread, I'm usually going to finish it before it goes stale. And I'm not going to buy that just to make crumbs. Certainly not going to make it just to make crumbs. Whereas the rusk is really pretty easy to make. Check out my video here. Rusk is easy to make. It makes sense to just make it for the sake of making crumbs. Doesn't take much time. Doesn't take much effort. Just take some flour, salt, and baking soda. Now, the other thing about breadcrumbs, and doing my some of the research I've done for making these sausages, a lot of people say to use sourdough. Use a sourdough bread for your crumbs because the yeast can affect the flavor. I'm not really catching much of a flavor difference as much as the texture difference. No, this rusk one is definitely a little more toothy. It just has a better texture. It may be that breadcrumbs, if they're coarsely ground, it would be more similar to this rusk. I don't know. I may try that in the future, but I may not because like I said, I'm not gonna buy bread just to make crumbs. I'm not gonna make bread to make crumbs. I generally don't have stale bread around. 
which I believe was the original use, you know, I believe they had stale bread around. It stretched the meat out. It also helped hold the juice in. I think that's how this whole thing started. The rusk is absolutely 100% better. Just has a better texture. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you learned anything or found this entertaining, you should probably subscribe to my channel if you're still watching. Got a lot of other videos you'd probably like. Make sure to put some love into the food you make. Peace.